All right. Next victim. This is the uh, Craftsman Platinum. There's no there's no manual push button choke on these anymore. That's the automatic choke that comes across the back and is taken off by the heat of the muffler. And he says it won't start. Now this is not a 7.25 horsepower, right? It is 7.25 foot-pounds gross torque, which in my mind is probably very close to a six and a half horsepower. It's 190 cc's. That's a misleading number on there. So this is the, uh, until, well Sears is going out of business. We haven't had one in Canada for over a year and the stores are closing weekly down south. That's too bad. So I'm just gonna see if I can get this to start and stay running if I jam the choke open. So just watch what I'm doing and you'll get, you'll get the point. Okay, and once again, please excuse how I look because I've been gardening. Okay, so we need we need a screwing a screw device. <laughs> we need some squirting gas, and we need something to hold the bale down. And let's squirt a little gas in there and see if we can make this baby run by forcing the choke open. I put a lot of gas in there and I'm going to have to rush to the fires. That's pretty fast. I wonder if I've got enough gas in here. Okay, you better fix that first. I'll be right back. Hey guys. Okay, I'm just going to use a little bit of two-stroke fuel. This just helps to lubricate the the top end of the motor. Uh, sometimes I do mix a 10% mix of gas and oil, but right now I ran out, and the future of the human race is at stake. So we are going to just do that. Now we'll get 26 comments. What is, what is your mixture on that, on that? And then this one is 50 to one. It's pretty lean, but it still has a blue tint to it. Alrighty. Alrighty then. Let's see if we can do this again. We're gonna poke the choke up. I think it's the carburetor's plug, but I'm gonna fill that baby with gas. Might give me that little extra time. choke forced open it's not running so it needs a carburetor clean yes once again a carburetor clean so we'll, we'll put it up on the on the lift let's see we've got plan a b and c already done already so let's just go to plan d right off the bat thing. It's pretty ugly, isn't it? Yes, I'm going to power wash it. That'll be plan C. And then plan D will be the curb clean. Okay, it's all wet. Now I put the air filter back on just to keep the water out of the carburetor. 
So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and do exactly what I just did. Uh, to see if anything has gotten wet. Should fire. Uh-oh. Okay, well that's where we were, right? Okay, back to plan D. Let's just do a walk around. This is my next new favorite lawnmower. It's the, one of the last of the flatheads, or L-head. It's not self-propel. Reliable engine. Well-made case. Good wheels. I like the bigger back wheels. They don't bounce around on, on a rough lawn like mine. Big gas tank. Yes, they aren't as efficient as the overhead valve ones, but there's a lot less moving parts to blow up when they start getting older. So this one is a nine, uh, 2000 and, let's have a look, 2012. Okay, I'll start that again. This is when these lawnmowers start showing up for us uh, self-taught backyard small engine mechanics is because they're six years old and if they and if anybody takes them to a service dealer you know four hours of labor and two parts and the value of the lawnmower is is uh, surpassed by the repair so this is when us old guys see them so now we're gonna just have a quick look at the fuel I should have done that first it's probably out of gas. Oh, that'd be funny, wouldn't it? So let's just have a quick look at the gas. Are you with me? Oh, it's got lots of fuel or something. Oh, yeah. So this customer told me that it was full of brand new fuel and it looks just great. No problem there. So now let's remove the carburation. Get my little U-shaped setup going. With the customer on the far side. Patient, maybe. We should call him. So, what do we do? Carburetor removal. I'm not even going to do the quick... I'm not even going to do the quick... Uh, bowl removal and spray out the jet. This one's really plugged, so I, I think something else is up. I'm going to use my new toy. Watch out! And I found out that these are from Harbor Freight, but they're good quality. Five sixteenths. Okay. Now learn to go slow. What? Well, that's five sixteenths. Proto. No? Ooh. Okay. Good lesson learned. Don't always use machines to take stuff apart. Oh, someone's been in here. These aren't that tight at the factory. Oh, man. 
that's what's going on. Someone's been in here. And I made sure that that tool was in the off position. Oh. I have to wreck the carburetor. Excuse my language. I hope this doesn't break. I'm just doing it an eighth of a turn at a time, eh? I might replace these bolts. I might even be cross-threaded. Really sad. Oh. Or it was the list Loctite on there. Oh. Not good. Should be two three eighths nuts to get that off of there, but I'm going to put a clamp on the fuel line and I'll put it facing to the back. Pliers, pliers. No, I'm going to just run a little bit of gas through that. See if it's clear. Let's see if it's getting fuel. Barely getting fuel. Okay. Let's get that carburetor off of there. There. Now, if I can, the uh, spring that holds. Again, see if I can get you in there. Oh, the batteries are going low. Okay, right there is the spring that runs the governor. Right there. See that? I'm going to disconnect that. Oh, we might leave it until I get the carburetor off, but now, you, now you've seen it. These are all the things that can go wrong, right? Hey, Alex, buddy. Okay, let's get that carb off of there. We're going to get the tray out. I was pretty disappointed on how tight that carburetor and housing was on there. Might be, like I said, it might be the what do you call a perm uh, thread locker. I'm going to need a quarter inch to get that choke arm off there. Alright guys, this is it. This is the uh, the big enchilada. Half inch. 
Are you with me? Get lots of light on this. Just have a look at the carburetor. Dump the gas out. Oh, there's trees and stuff coming out of there. Oh, somebody's been in here. It's just cruel and unusual punishment for a guy my age. Okay, let's have a look. It's clear. Hmm. There's a little water in it. See that? There's a little. Okay. There's a little water, but that could have been from the. <laughs> could have been from me, right? Although it looks old. Okay. And I can see through this, so I don't know. I'm just going to turn you off, get a little bit of tubing, and we're going to see what's plugged and what isn't plugged. Hey, I'm back. So, on a carburetor, when it's upside down, you shouldn't be able to blow, if you put a, just any kind of tubing on here, quarter inch, and blow hard, you shouldn't be able to blow through the seat which is underneath there. I'll show you in a sec. And underneath it should blow. Now that sounds okay. Now we're going to take the float off, removing the pin, put it in a separate tray. Now when we remove this, the needle comes out. We should be able to blow some carburetor cover through there. Don't need that anymore. So let's just give this a little wash. Get a plastic brush. I bought a set of plastic brushes, or I bought a set of brushes and one of them was plastic. And I love it. Gets in the little nicks and crannies. My hands. I'm going to wash my hands right away, guys. Okay, that's pretty clean. I'm going to just blow it off. And we'll get rid of this awful, cruddy liquid, and then I'm going to go wash my hands. Sometimes I wear gloves and sometimes I... Okay, I'll be right back. All right. Now, the fine work. See if we can shoot through the sideways here. Yep, and the, up through the top. So it's not that. Ooh. Here, let's just plug that with the, my finger. This should be good. Okay. Just rinse it in gas. I'm going to go wash my hands again and then I'll put some gloves on. That stuff stings. Okay. <laughs> Who of you out there are old enough to remember this? The guy with the biggest hand wins. I bet you're laughing, boo. Road King. Dave Ackerman might remember that. 
You know, they say those cartoons were too many, had too many violent acts per hour. Like, 32 violent acts per hour or something on Roadrunner. <laughs> but I just watched one of those superhero times 10 movies where there's 10 superheroes in it. And it looked to me like there was about 32 acts, two, 32 violent acts per hour in that one, too. Okay, back to work. For that deadly guardian. Carburetor. So far, there's been no reason why this carburetor will not pull fuel up the emulsion tube. When the emulsion tube is... We're going to get a little bit of light on this boy. Whoops. Okay. So right there, that little brass do hummer that comes up from the bottom is the emulsion tube. And if you're with me, you can maybe push this copper wire up and see it extract out the emulsion tube, right? Okay, here we go. Yep, we should be able to see that. Oh. So that's not plugged. So now we're going to start squirting. If I can find the right... I've got so many of these little red... Uh... There it is. I sharpened one like a pencil and it works pretty good. I got that idea from Boo. His nickname is Boo. Boo and Eunice on call. That's what I think he says. Oh, that's coming out the drain. Good. Okay. Good. Okay, let's go to the throttle side. There's no tiny little... I'm kind of... I'm kind of at a loss as to why this engine is not firing. Everything's clear, and that's the one beautiful thing about Briggs and Stratton carburetors is that they are simple. That's pretty weird, man. I do not see any reason for this carburetor to not work. So I'm going to take the top of the motor off and see if the intake manifold and the uh, the intake manifold and the choker are working properly. But it should still stay running when I had that screwdriver stuck in there, right? And I like cleaning carburetors, as you guys have probably figured out. off so that's pretty weird everything was clean and I know the owner's family they're they all buy good equipment and they all keep their stuff good they use premium fuel <laughs> look at that okay so I'm just gonna go to plan E now okay I'm just putting the carburetor back together again Float, float, pin, and needle. The clean um, bowl seal. I I think somebody's had this apart and was looking for this exact problem. And they probably tried and were unsuccessful when they brought it to me. But maybe not. It's just that those screws that were holding that Those screws that were holding that uh, air cleaner assembly on were on so tight, it almost looked like they were, uh, they used an air tool to put them on. Now I will use a machine to disassemble, but I don't use machines to assemble. Okay. So now, we'll 
put our little carburetor stuff back in its cubby hole. I'm confident that carburetor's clean. So now I'm gonna uh, bring it over to here for the second round. We're just gonna look at the choke assembly.